Let's go. And we will sing. Oh. Wednesday, the 10th day of November 2021. And for your lab boy today, we are telling you that life is given for a purpose. Our reading is still in the book of Ecclesiastes. That's one of the books credited to King Solomon and all his wisdom. And we're in chapter 9, and we'll be taking our reading from the first verse. So let's go. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. Not as is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. There is an evil among all things that are under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yeah, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in the heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepted thy works. Let thy garment, garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. I returned, and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. For man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. This 
is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a lot that is packaged into this relatively long passage. Because ordinarily left to me, I would preach like three, four, five sermons from this long passage. But here the mandate is to let you recognize that life is given for a purpose. And life being given for a purpose means that you should live it to the fullest. But I need to constantly remind you that do not worry so much about the language employed by King Solomon in all of Ecclesiastes. Just read between the lines, pray before you read, make sure that your understanding captures beyond his emotions to go into the realm of your spirit to understand what message is there that he actually has for you. Because yes, he may tell you that the same portion is for he that is good and he that is evil that can only be in some minute respect. Because the one that is good and the one that is evil, once death comes, then judgment comes and they are separated. And even before judgment comes concerning death, even here on earth, you do good, you're going to get rewards that will have to do with your doing good. And if you do evil, right here on earth, you are going to face the reward of evil. So life is given for a purpose and from God, that purpose is always good. And whatever that purpose is, that God has led you to understand, then you should live it to the fullest. I love the portion that says that whatever your hand finds to do, do with all your might. Because once you do not do it, once you pass a particular age, you can do it again. Now because my wife and I run schools, we have a preschool, we have a primary school, we have a secondary school, and sometimes I go to play football with the little children, and then they dribble me, my brain tells me how to move, but my body cannot move the way the brain is telling me to move any longer. And then I also see some of the teachers also trying to play on the swings and all, other things. And I just remind myself and remind those teachers, our times for all those things are gone. That's the truth of the matter. It's only for the young children now. So when we had the time, we should have played the ball with all of our hearts and be merry. And now that you still have life, what is it that you are doing? What work are you doing? Are you enjoying that work? You are an architect. Are you fully occupied to the extent that you are enjoying that work? You are a preacher. Are you doing it with all of your might, with all joy, not thinking that it is a burden unto you? What is the job that you are doing? Do it with all your might. Are you a teacher? In any level of education, you are teaching in the university, you are teaching in the elementary school, do it with all of your heart, with all of your mind. Have you found yourself in politics and you are occupying a particular position? That position is given for a purpose. It is to glorify the name of the Lord. So not only is life being given for a purpose, everything in it that you have to do is given for a purpose. And that purpose, you want to know it, is to glorify God. Because in all things that King Solomon wrote, in all of Ecclesiastes, like I will always say, you have to round up any portion of your reading of Ecclesiastes, reading chapter 12 of it, and reading verses 13 and 14, because he'll tell you there that there is only one conclusion for the whole thing, that you should fear God, and that you should do his will. So, life is given for a purpose, and that purpose is to fear God and do his will. And so that means any other thing that you do in between, you are a teacher, you are a preacher, you are an architect, you are an estate of your value, you are a career civil servant, you are a politician. All those offices are given to you, all those opportunities are given to you for the purpose of honoring God, doing his will, being in his purpose, and letting him be so happy with you that he continues to bless you. Life is given for a purpose. Are you in that purpose? You can only be in that purpose if you are called by his name. You can only be in that purpose if you are a Christian. So if you are listening to me, you are watching me, and perhaps you have fellowship with me thus far today, and you are not yet a Christian, this is the time for you to give your life to Christ. 
so that you recognize that life given to you for a purpose is to be in the will of God. Are you ready for that experience? It's a unique one. It's one that you never regret once you get into it. Come on, just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord, I come to you today. I know that life is given for a purpose and I want to live according to that purpose. Therefore, Father, I come to you declaring that I know that I've been a sinner in times past. Forgive me of my sins. Rewrite my story from today. Let me also be called by your name that I may recognize the more, the purpose for which my own life is given and live according to it. That I pray for in Jesus' mighty name. You're welcome to the kingdom if you said that prayer. And I'm sure you can hear in the background the electricity just being restored in my neighborhood. That also is for a purpose for us to be able to do more things that have to do with electricity. But for now, if you are in Christ already or you just gave your life to Christ, let's together say this prayer. Say, Father, I thank you for the privilege of life that you have given unto me. Help me to fulfill whatever purpose that you have given my life for, that I may live according to that purpose and showcase all the glory that you have reserved for me and return all those glories to you and let all the blessings remain mine today and always I pray in Jesus' name. I say amen to that prayers, both for myself and for you. And I say go out today, recognize that life is given for a purpose, live it to the fullest. I need to go well with you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I join you faithful. I call you faithful. I call you good.